What's up everyone and welcome to Robitech and our first ever DIY episode. Now the purpose of these videos is to help you with tech or game hacks that are going to make your life better. Hopefully. I, I mean, yes, they will. Everyone will. This is going to change your life. Oh, okay, okay. I might be selling, overselling it a bit. Anyway, on today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can drastically increase the speed of your Xbox load times, either on your OG, S, or X version of the Xbox One console. Now, how might you be able to do that, you ask? Well, it's actually pretty simple, and near I say, not that expensive. We are essentially going to make a USB 3 SSD caddy for all your games. Now, you're probably asking me, Roby, what do I need? So. Hold on, chill, I'm gonna tell you in just a second. What you're gonna need is an 860 Samsung 860 Evo, kinda just like this one. This is a two terabyte model, and you can get this for about $229. Now I'm doing a more expensive version, but if you do a 500 gig version of this, it's only about 70 bucks. And in fact, Seagate even sells an SSD that's a one terabyte that's only 50 bucks. Now obviously the larger the size, the more expensive this gets. And I'll make sure I put in the links in the description below to like the 500 gig, the one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte models of these drives. Now it's important to note that all SSDs are not made equal, so choosing a reputable brand is a must. However, you can always look at the speed and compare them when shopping around to choose what's best for you. Western Digital, Seagate, Intel, Samsung's are all great brands. For this 860 Samsung Evo drive, it has a sequential read-write speed of about 550 megabits per second, or 520 on the low side. Just for comparison, the internal drive of an Xbox One X is around 80 megs per second, so you can see why this would make a bit of a difference when we're talking about load times. Now the second thing you're going to need is a USB 3 external hard drive enclosure for a 2.5 inch SATA SSD like this Orico one I have right here. This is the enclosure we're going to put this SSD in so our Xbox One can use it. Now these are pretty inexpensive. This one was about 10 bucks. Uh, it's a housing unit to just basically hold the drive, nothing much. I just like the way this one looked and you can look in the link in the description below if you want to pick this one up or anything else. The reason I was so specific about the title is so you can search on Amazon, Newegg or whatever for your own version of it. Anyway, that's it. Oh, well, you'll need a heart. You'll, you'll also need a screwdriver, but that's it. What you have here is a full two terabyte drive that's ready for your Xbox One X for about 230 bucks. Or you could do this for as cheap as $60 if you did that Seagate model that I'm gonna put in the description below. I'm also gonna be comparing that to this. This is the Seagate game drive for Xbox SSD. Now these are about $111 and they're actually a little bit faster. We'll get to numbers of bit in a bit. This is already put together, but I want to make sure that I covered this as well because this is another good option for speeding things up if you just don't want to do your DIY. Again, not as cheap, but looks sexy, has the great title on it, and you can buy this and you're basically good to go. If you could spend 120 bucks or maybe even 60 bucks, you could literally save nearly half the time if you just follow the DIY that we're going to get to next. So let's build this puppy and let's get going. So First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up these puppies and just kind of walk through the individual pieces. So first we're gonna open up our two terabyte SSD drive. You're gonna see this is kind of nice and small. So there we go, a little two terabyte SSD. Boom, there we go. Boom, there we go. Boom, there we go. You got it in all things. Pretty simple in terms of what we're looking at here. We've got our SATA, we've basically got our SATA connector and our power connector. So we're gonna be cooking, we're gonna be hooking this up. So that's that. Get that off to the side. Next we're gonna open up this Orico two and a half inch DAR drive enclosure. Sounds so formal. Watch me struggle with this, Roby. How many boxes have you opened? Over 3,000. Okay. Um, but not enough of these apparently. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's opening, it's opening, it's like a miracle. Here it comes. Ooh, see, this is what I was excited about. This, like, see, it's just nice and see-through, and we get we get a little peel action as well. And there's our power drive right there. Okay, so there we go. Off to the side. The first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna peel the plastic off. Oh, there. Oh, is that it? No. Nope. There it is, right there. Here we go. That peel. It's not sound. Oh. 
There we go. One peel. Here's the second peel right here. We're going to find it. Where's the peel? It's not appealing. <laughs> uh, okay, I got it. I got it. Here we go. Oh, and while I'm peeling, it may not be a bad thing you might notice is you get a nice view of the uh, Robitech merch that you can check out in the description below. Maybe you can uh, get your sweatshirt and perhaps uh, save some chippy while you're at it. Anyway. Okay, here we go. Here's the other peel. Boom. There we go. Peeled. Okay, so let's talk about how simple this is. Okay, there you go. Step one, open. Step two, place. Step three, close. Step four, so basically for this one, just like that, step, boom, installed. That's it. We're done. For that, like this versus buying a pre-built one, that's the difference. This or this. This is about $70 less than this. So I'm talking about when you talk about a DIY version, when you're really thinking about it, if you're a little bit afraid, I'm just trying to show you, this is a pretty simple thing to do on your own. Then all we need is this little cable right here. Open that bad boy up. And if you look right here on the back, there's your little plug right there on the back end. So you just plug this in oop, like so. So that this goes into the USB port of your Xbox. That's it. We've built it. Let's get it loaded up. So let's talk about setting this bad boy up. I'm going to use an Xbox One X here. All you'll need to do is find a spare USB 3.0 port on your Xbox One. On the Xbox One X, there's actually one in the front and two available in the back. So simply plug this bag boy in using this thing and voila. Next thing you gotta do, format your storage. Make sure you do not do it for media. Choose the second option and you're good to go. Now one key point here though, make sure you name it something good and easily understood so you know what's what. I called mine fast external or Seagate. So I know what was installed where and which drive I was using. Another thing worth noting is that you do not want to set this as your default installation place, especially if you're using like a small 500 gigabyte drive. I want to be selective, and I am, and you want to be selective, which you should be, on what you are installing on it so you don't fill up the drive and end up spending more time figuring out what's on the drive instead of actually playing games. Now for the best part. Let's talk about the numbers and how we tested this. I wanted to make sure we used a variety of different titles that covered the gamut of gaming genres while also trying to test where most of you guys are going to see the savings. So I took Jedi Fallen Order, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Red Dead Redemption 2, and The Outer Worlds as the games of my choice. For testing criteria, I loaded them on an internal drive, my DIY Samsung drive, and this built all together Seagate branded Xbox One SSD. Now, I ensured that before they were used, I fully copied everything over to make sure that the drive was doing nothing else. Basically, all of the games were on each drive before I tested them to make sure this was as fair as possible. Now, I wanted to check in two scenarios specifically. The first was, what's the initial load time? Something all of us are going to do quite frequently. The second being loading a campaign save or a save game of any sort. Of any sort sorry. Again, another thing we're all gonna frequently do and where we're actually gonna see the most savings. Now, some of you might be asking, well, why didn't I try multiplayer? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. You are actually always limited by the slowest person in multiplayer because the game won't start until that person is in the game. So even though you might be in the lobby faster, your overall savings in that mode is actually non-existent. Let's talk about the results. First of all, let's look at the initial load time results. This was basically from the point that you press A and launch a title until it's either playing a movie or gets to a start screen, whichever comes first. It's technically not loading anymore and you aren't seeing a loading screen. On average, when you look at these numbers, you are actually seeing a 23% savings in time on your initial launch, which isn't anything to shake a stick at. Now, most of these launches don't take a ton of time, but then again, when you're talking about 23%, that's still a pretty substantial savings. In the grand scheme of things, the Seagate is actually saving you a few more seconds here and there, but it is actually double the cost of our DIY solution. It does look pretty, and in the end, it is faster, but you are paying a premium price. 
Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is when we load a save game. And this is when you're gonna see the majority of the savings here, not just a little bit either. Across the board, you're looking at an average savings of 45%, which is crazy when you really think about it. If your average savings is 45 seconds, like a game in Red Dead Redemption 2, a load across an average game take of you playing 30 hours a week, that means you would get almost a day back in your life from loading, from loading. That is 24 hours in your 365 day year that you are spent waiting for loading that you could get back for $70. When you put it that way, why would you not spend $70 to get your day back? Now, again, you do actually get some savings from the Seagate drive, and this is the fastest possible solution. But if you're on a budget, and the savings only grows as you look at larger storage options, then the DIY solution is still the most optimal. But if you want the absolute fastest, the Seagate is that option. So, for less than $100, you can save a day, two days. If you think about gaming over 30 years, you could essentially save a full month of your time. The more you play, the more this is going to save you time. You can have, I mean, basically, you can have this version right here if you're afraid of doing the DIY, which was, I think, Brian, what, what's like three steps? We did three steps, but if you're really nervous about it and you don't want to take the time to do this, you can buy a DIY version for a little bit. Uh, let's see, say, what, 30 more bucks in some cases? The CK8 solution is more expensive, but it's branded, and honestly, the small form factor is pretty hard to beat. This thing is tiny. Now, all of the options are actually in the description below. So if you want to check out the options, make sure you check out those links. And again, you can just follow along here. We've set it all out for you. Well, guys, that is it for this special DIY episode of Robitech. We hope you've enjoyed this content. If you do like it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, just like this one. If you don't understand what that is, it looks like this. We're actually like this. No, maybe it's like this. Is it like this? It might be like this. So click that thumbs up and make sure that you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and make sure you ring that notification bell so you have an indication each and every time we go live. And if you like this DIY, you should check out our weekly DIY where we build PCs live every week on Mixer from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time over at mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi. And also give me a follow over on Instagram and Twitter at Roby1Kenobi. Guys, this has been awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this and we look forward to saving you time and money here on the show in the future. We'll check you later. Hashtag beefy course.